Welcome back Guardians. If you are here right now, it is probably because you cannot access your PlayStation or Xbox. Otherwise, you would be playing The Taken King right now. It was released yesterday, and rather than play the game like everyone else, the first thing I did was start reading all the new Grimoire cards. I believe there is about 176 or 178, which I've probably read about 80% of them. And I literally had my jaw wide open with shock, awe and excitement on about four occasions with reading the cards. Today's video will cover one of those moments. Just a quick couple of announcements and acknowledgements. I've been chatting to DBM Gamer about a collaboration in the near future. He makes great lore videos also and is very close to 20,000 subscribers. So please go help him out and check out his channel in the link below. Also, a big thanks to Hutch8599 for providing some information on the new campaign missions. I've only had time to play the first three missions, so I wanted to make sure that I was not giving away any spoilers. Hutch was actually one of my very first subscribers, like I mean under 100, so please check out his channel. I've also used Planet Destiny's database and also the Ishtar Collective website to access the new Grimoire cards. One last thing, let's talk spoilers. I have chosen not to have any new footage in the background because I understand people are still playing the campaign. Personally, I am having a ton of fun already with only the first three missions and I would hate to ruin it for anyone else. Also, today's video will be divided into four levels. The first level will not have any spoilers. Well, to the best of my knowledge, will not have any spoilers. Think about it as a low spoiler risk. The second level will be a medium risk for spoilers. The third level will be a high risk and the fourth and final level will be extreme risk for spoilers. I'll give you fair warning when the spoiler alert increases and I have no issue with you leaving this video right now, finishing the campaign, enjoying Destiny the way it is at the moment, completing the raid over the weekend or at least competing in the raid over the weekend and then coming back. This video will still be here. Let's begin. Spoiler alert level 1. So today we are talking about Toland the Shattered. The new Taken King items and the Grimoire cards reference Toland many times and we actually learn what happened next after his disappearance and suspected death from Eris Maud's fire team. For those new Guardians, here is a recap of the previous events. There were thousands of Guardians who tried to reclaim the moon from the Hive. They lost terribly due to the presence of Crota. Crota impaled many Guardians on his sword. The battle was called the Great Disaster. One of the survivors was Ariana III, an Exo. When Ariana III returned to Earth, she looked to assemble a fire team to learn Crota's weakness and take him down. She quickly found Eris Morn. Between them, they could not see a solution, so they sought forbidden knowledge from Tolan the Shattered. Tolan the Shattered was obsessed with the Hive and had already understood some of their secrets. He tells Ariana III and Eris Morn that Crota they faced on the moon was but a shadow and the real Crota exists in a netherworld. This is now reinforced by a new Grimoire card, Oryx Rebuke, which says, When Crota's victory over our little blue world seems certain, a moment of silence now for Wei Ning, whose directness I admired. It was Oryx who called his child back into the netherworld to plan the final victory. So following Crota's return to his netherworld after the great disaster, Ariana III, Eris and Toland gathered three others, Saimota, Veltalo and Oma Agar to join them. Their task was to firstly stop Crota from re-entering our realm for the final assault and secondly enter his realm and defeat him. Sai, Vel, Oma and Ariana III were killed. Well, Ariana III is still a question mark in my book. Tolan was suspected to have been killed, however never confirmed. Eris Morn of course survived in the Hive Tunnels, lost her light and her ghost. The last thing we knew about Tolan was that he was trying to learn the Death Singer's song, that is Iayut -E the Death Singer in Crota's End Raid. This is from the Iayut -E the Death Singer Grimoire card. The song is death, to hear it is to die, to know the words is mortal. Oh good point, Ariana, death is just a word, isn't it? A catch-all term for the failure to go on. Nothing spiritual, nothing with its own quiddity. We all died once, it did not prove insurmountable. But what if, what if, 
What if sh listened? What if death were refined, described in its totality, made autonomous and universal, separate from any context or condition? What if she could evoke the ending of anything? How then would she know the song and sing it, without herself dying? And also this from Crota's end card. Tolan speaks, he hardly seems mad at times, of the terrible things that await us, a secret song he hunkers to learn, and the issue of that song, an ashen burning star husk that looms above, the utter antithesis of life. He talks of it with a curious ambition, I do not want to understand. So now the taking King Grimoire card adds to this story, Ghost Fragment the Hellmouth says this, the charming Iayot made her introductions, and I was very pleased to meet her. We had a conversation, a little tetayot, a couple old wizards exchanging definitions. A tete a tete is a French phrase, I believe, that means to have a private conversation with someone. Tete meaning head, so it translates to head to head. So Tolan is being a little bit punny and says tete a yurt. Basically, I do believe this is Tolan talking, and that he did find the Death Singer, and that he had a private conversation with the Death Singer, or as he calls it, a tete yurt. Okay, now we rise to level 2, spoiler alert. The same card, Ghost Fragment the Health Mouth, provides further info on Tolan's journey. It says, I am dead. Vel is spectacularly dead. Omer and Sire are quite dead too. Ariana, poor Ariana. She was so very bright at the end, wasn't she? A brave light. But Crota was unmoved. That shadow is detached from its source. Light makes it darker. I could feel his presence, and if I still had a ghost, I am sure it would have screamed. I too am detached from my source. Then Tolan has a conversation with the Death Singer, and he describes it as this. I defined myself a friend. She defined for me the quiddity of death, and she sang the song of that fearful autonomy. Revelation, my friends. It does go down hard. The definition killed me. The killing redefined me. This is the shape and the point of the tooth. Nothing has ever lived that will not die. Now I fly between green black suns in the labyrinth beyond Crota's god star. This is the overworld. The sea of screams where the throne universes of the great high fester in eternal majesty. I move among them. I map the shapes and connections of this world. Holy shit! Sorry for cursing. Tolan describes himself as dead. However, he discovered the Death Singer's song and entered the realm of the hive, the overworld, the sea of screams, where all the hive gods live. And he is taking notes for us. It goes on to say, I want to appear in the tower and taunt them, Lolo. I never sleep. I dance in light and shadow. I never sleep. I will never die. I will never die. I want to ask them, if you followed your laws here to this trembling, fearful place, of what use were those laws? But I have work to do. I shout into deep places. Osiris, I call. Osiris, Osiris, can you hear me? Sometimes I think he answers. Sometimes I wonder what became of Eris. She was very tenacious. For the first time, I am lonely. Toland is also trying to communicate with Osiris. Now I need more time to work on that piece of information, but this is very interesting. And I believe this comes back to the Crota, son of Oryx Grimoire card, which says... The nature and possible interrelationship of the Vex Gate system and the Hive Netherworlds remains unexplored. If you then look at some of the other new Taken King cards, I believe Toland is speaking with us. The Echo of Oryx card says this Dearest Guardian, I write to you from a place of high content. No, 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 don't be offended, don't be so superficial. It's in the architecture of these spaces. They look down on you. I wander out here in worlds cut by sharp hive swords, and I send back these messages for you of Oryx. I believe many of these new Taking King cards is Toland, 
guiding us from the Hive Netherworld. Now we are going to raise the spoiler alert to level 3. This has potential to ruin aspects of the plotline. If you've already finished the campaign, I think you'll be okay. That being said, I haven't finished the campaign myself. We will start by reflecting back upon Ghost Fragment, the Hive 4 card, which is a part of Tolan's journal. We now can make sense of this card. It says, What may seem like a void between their shrieks holds what I believe to be yet another clue to their origins. In one tone the Hive plead to their gods, but in the next they whisper to another. The other being the Hive are whispering to, I believe are the worms. I need to do a full review on this, however, I believe the Hive sided with the worms, these creatures that devour the light and in return give the Hive their power and allow them to survive. Tolan goes on to say, four sounds, oft repeated, but only four, though I am on the trail of a fifth, faintly heard from the buzz that one spilled from the shrine, Ear, Ur, Zol and Yule. Sound familiar? If you've looked at the raid armor of King's Fall, these names have been revealed. Mouth of Ur, Chasm of Yule, Grasp of Ear, Path of Zol. I believe these are the original worms, maybe even the worm gods. And now if you search for these names, you'll discover the fifth worm in the new cards. The Book of Sorrow, Grimmel Card, Chapter 9, Verse 1.9. The bargain reads, You are Orash, heir to the Osmian throne. You stand on the naked hull of an ancient ship. You stand exposed to the crushing pressure and ferocious heat of the deeper fundament. It should annihilate you. It is by my will alone that you survive. I am Yul, the honest worm. Behold my passage, behold my vast displacement, my ponderous strength, my great and coiling length, my folded jaws and curled wings. Behold the hiving city symbiotic with my flesh. I am fecund, Orash. I am at the beginning and end of lives. Behold Ea and Zol, and Ur, and Akka, the virtuous worms. Look upon us and know that we are gods. For millions of years we have been trapped, growing in the deep. From across the stars we have called life to fundament, so that it might contend against extinction. For millennia we have awaited you, our beloved hosts. The name of the fifth worm was revealed as Akka. I believe that this transcript describes the first encounter between the Hive and the Worm Gods and the bargain that was struck. I have not looked into this word fundament yet. It is a new word in the Destiny Dictionary, however I do know it is going to be pivotal to the plotline. Let's move on to level 4 spoilers. Honestly, if I was not making lore videos, I would likely wait to hear this information after I have passed the raid. Otherwise, if you're still here, let's go. Let me read you this from the Oryx Defeated card. Listen. Death is the last part of living and life is learning to die. This song is the same as the singing. The last truth commands me to eat all the light in the sky. I will go on forever. I will understand. Dwell a moment on the weight of what you have done. Contemplate the story you just ended. Will you ever do anything that screams down the millennia? Will you ever hammer your will on the universe until it rings and rings and rings? Oryx was an awesome power. Show reverence. Alright, enough, enough. A vacancy has opened, hasn't it? How interesting. How very interesting. Do you ever pause, dear listener, to consider who benefits from all this heroism you commit? Do you ever look around you and feel the faintest chill, as if you are the tiny little ball bearing placed beneath a great mass, so that it might, if pushed, begin to roll? You are a god yourself now. You've consecrated yourself. Emulate me. Use your power to learn. There are worse things to practice being. Once again, I believe that Toland 
is speaking with us from the Hive Netherworld. He has witnessed Oryx fall and says that a vacancy has opened, meaning to become one of the Hive Gods. He then says, you are a god yourself now. <laughs> oh my god, no pun intended, mind blown. Take what you will from that card. That is enough for today, guys. I have to get back to playing some more games and reading some more cards. If you stuck around to level 4, spoiler, drop a comment below with the word level 4, just so I can see who stuck around. This is Marlin Games. Peace.